Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival Virtual Edition. Featuring interactive cooking demos, live and streaming concerts featuring some of Canada's best Indigenous talent, virtual marketplace, online arts and crafts demonstrations, social distancing powwow, and more. Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival Virtual Edition, June 1st to 21st. More at summersolstice My name is Emily Brockley Hoffler and I'm an Algonquin artist from the Ottawa area. This is where I grew up. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make art from nature. The first thing that you want to do is go out in your yard or when you're walking and collect things that you might want to use when you're going to be creating your story on your canvas. So some of the things that we found was cedar. I like this piece because it's got pine cones on it. These little guys were in the forest. I also pressed some ferns from my backyard. This is a periwinkle leaf. These are the periwinkle flowers. And we also collected some moss and birch bark. Now when you're collecting things like bark, you wanna make sure that it's bark that's already fallen off the tree. Um, or if there's like a dead stump and it's got some interesting bark, you could collect that as well. But you don't wanna pull bark off of a living tree. Now you can use a canvas or you could use a piece of wood. You can choose to use paint if you want. I am using paint today. Um, oh, and we also found these dried flowers. So to start off, I'm going to use some paint and just create a quick background. If you don't have paint brushes, you could use popsicle sticks or a piece of sponge. If you have a kitchen sponge, you could cut off a piece and use that. You could use your fingers. There's lots of things that you could do if you don't have brushes. And even if you don't have paint and you want to do a colored background, you could uh, use sand and put it in glue to create like a textured background, but it's not really necessary. I'm just doing it for some contrast. When you're creating your canvas and what you're going to create on your canvas, you may want to create a story. So the story that I'm telling is mostly about things in nature that grow in my own yard. Um, but perhaps you have a family story or a story about something that's happened to you that you would want to tell. Um, you may have traditional stories that you want to represent. So for example, if you wanted to do a story about deer or moose, perhaps you use ferns or the cedar to create the antlers. You could break off pieces of a pine cone to create fish scales. Uh, there's lots of things that you can do 
with things found in nature to represent something else. And when I create art, a lot of the stories in my art are from things that have happened to me in my life. A lot of my stories or elements of my stories are from things that I did growing up with my grandfather. He lived in Kittigan CB and we used to go up there and visit him a lot with my grandma. And he would take us into the forest and we would go fishing and go for drives. And it was always lots of fun. But he was also teaching us a lot of important lessons. So when I was talking about the bark and the importance of not pulling bark off a live tree, that was something that he taught me when I was growing up because I was pulling bark off a tree. And he told me in a really nice way that the bark was protecting the tree and that we needed to leave it on so that the tree didn't get sick. Okay. So that's sort of the background. I think I'm happy with it. And you can use different colors. I just picked colors found in nature, blues and greens and a bit of white, but please feel free to use whatever colors you have or whatever colors you're attracted to. And this activity is good for any age group. Um, you'll see in some of the clips, my three-year-old Victor uh, was helping and painting his own canvas and created a finished piece that I will show you later. Here's our team class, Mama. Thank and you. we're using acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. Um. Why do you mix it, okay? Yep, you can mix acrylic paint. Okay, I change it. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Do you have a camera, Mama? Yep. You are some crafts. Oh. Okay. Now, there's lots of different kinds of glue that you can use. I really like a tacky glue because it's thicker and it really helps to adhere things to the canvas. Um, Mod Podge also would work. Uh, you could use a school glue, but just keep in mind it's a bit thinner and it takes longer to dry. So you would just want to make sure that what you put on your canvas can sit to dry until the glue is completely set. Now, I'm going to use some of the tacky glue. You can squeeze it out onto either a plate or I'm using wax paper. So I'm going to start with some cedar. Now lots of you will know that cedar is one of our medicines. This I collected from a tree in my backyard. We have lots of cedar trees and we have lots of friends that live in our cedar trees, uh, chickadees, and we get lots of other birds that come to our yard. So when I see cedar, I do think about it as a medicinal plant but I also think about it as a house for our friendly neighborhood birds. So I'm going to put this on to represent a tree. And don't be afraid if it comes off your canvas, that's totally fine. Uh, these canvases came with a, a little stand, so as long as it's going off the sides and not the bottom, it should be completely okay. And I'm going to add this one. I really liked this piece because it had the pine cones. It's really important when you are collecting what you're going to use that you know what it is before you pick it. Um, at this time of year, 
there are a few things out that you don't want to pick, like uh, wild parsnip and uh, poison ivy. So just be aware when you're collecting what's around you and that you're only collecting things that you know for sure what they are. Okay, now you can sort of see on the canvas that there's some glue. Don't worry about that because when it dries, that's gonna become clear and you're not gonna see it anymore. Okay, now I'm gonna add my pressed flowers. If you haven't had time to press flowers and you would like to try that, you can always add it later. So once everything is dry, um, you can add your pressed flowers at that point as well. Okay, so if you wanna press flowers, it's a good way to create an interesting effect on your canvas or wood. It makes it easier to glue when you're ready. Now, if you wanna do this, you're gonna to want to press your flowers, you know, a week or two before you glue it on so that they're nice and dry. This one, for example, was pressing for about a week and it's pretty, pretty dry and pretty flat now. All you need is some wax paper, a heavy book, and then whatever you want to press. So these are just flowers for my garden. You don't want them overlapping because when they press, they will stick together. I sort of try to flatten them the way that I would like them to be pressed. And you'll be able to see through your wax paper how they're looking. open your book I open it all the way to the very back page and I slip it inside and then press down you can add other books on top to make sure that they stay uh, really flat while they're being pressed I really enjoy ferns. These ferns, if you catch them, when they're just forming, they are fiddleheads and you can eat them and they are delicious. Now the ferns are quite delicate, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply the glue directly to my canvas and then that way they won't break. There we go. And last, I am going to add some of the moss. Now, I tried to remove as much of the soil from the back as I could, um, but if you're having a hard time removing the soil, you can also cut off, you can see that, you can also cut off the green tops and then use it to glue to your piece. 
Now for the moss, I think I am going to just add some Mod Podge and tacky glue directly to the canvas and then I'm going to glue, glue it on that way. So I'm getting lots of paint on the bottom for the heavier items. Now you could always try to um, use pine cones, but you might have to slice them. Or like I said, you can break them apart, uh, especially if they're still wet, they'll sort of peel off a little bit better. And you can use those as well. There we go. I'm making some progress. Are I done? Almost. Okay. Do you think I should add anything else? Uh huh. What should I put? Put some of uh, these ferns. One of these ferns? Uh huh. Okay. Uh, not finished yet, Mama. Okay. Is the picture almost ready? Yep. Do you want to put anything on yours? Uh, yes, please. What would you like to put on yours? Put on the the dish. Okay. Okay. And so I uh, do this. I have some orchard craft, no mud. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So you're ready to put something on yours? Uh huh. You want some cedar? Uh huh. Cedar. Okay. I'll put these on. So here's some cedar. You can add it on where your paint is. Now, because Victor has so much paint on his canvas, the cedar might actually just stick, and when the paint dries, it will be stuck to the canvas. Thank you. You're welcome. We also found some dried flowers. Mm -hmm. Do you want to put those on? Mm -hmm. Need another one? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's move this one. All right, here's one more. And I need that one. Okay. On the side. Here, let's add this. I like that okay. one for me. And now we'll hold it up. There's Victor's finished one. Do you want to hold it? Oh, uh, I'm going to add this. Okay, sit down. All right, so here is my finished canvas and Victor's finished canvas. Was that fun? I want to get this. And now I want to... You want to do oh, another one? Huh. All right, so Christian and Victor are going to demonstrate how you can do this if you do not have paint or canvas. So they are going to arrange their natural items and some sand and stones on their paper and then we will take a picture and show you what it looks like at the end. Yeah, let's start. Basically. Let's start. Yeah, so I'm gonna make a fish. So my brother's starting. I will start. I need to some start something. This is some like class. This is basically like I'm. I'm basically just like making the body of the fish, and then I just. And also, we have these um, little crystals that I want to put on that fish. But, 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 um, but wait, I'm going to use some of this pine. That's cedar. Cedar head. I will use some and cedar. Like, put it for the tail. And I will use some cedar. Too. Victor's going to make some, a fish too. But I don't know what type of fish it is yet. But well, I'm just putting the tail with the cedar and... Yeah. Yeah. So Cedar. I don't know what animal picture he's making. I'm just making a plate. Then just put the that there and that the uh, pine cone there, and then it sort of looks like a fish. But just what you had to do is I want to like make it look like it's actually underwater. That's why it's blue paper. And yeah, I'm gonna make some water. I'm gonna make a. T also, I want to make another a tiny fish. No, a tiny fish? Or a hedgehog. I'm going to make a hedgehog here. 
I say cause. Hey, Victor. Uh, Victor. You're using too much. Sprinkle. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. I don't know what Victor's actually making it. But it seems like... Okay, so I need my cedar dish. I need to use some flour. Back spike. Hey, what's this called? You can put that on your paper. Spiky. Yeah, you want to use that one? There. Yeah. So. Oh, that. That must be. I'll take this one. Sorry, you use my spoon. That's mine. Yeah, it's okay. If you does that, but. Do you want any bark? Oh, sure. I would need bark. For his eyes. I need bark. No. You want a piece of bark? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is called birch bark. Mm -hmm. Birch bark. It's also made, made to make birch bark. Victor, yeah. do you want a smaller piece? Mama can cut it. Okay. Cut the scissors and cut his mm -hmm. arm. Cut his arm. That's his arm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so so we're going to just keep making with the this powder, whatever it's called. I'm just going to spread it around on his legs. I'm just going to make sure. I want some more. Yeah. I want some more like on Mama's back. And I need to... You want some more sand? Some more sand. Yeah, I think we're going to need some more sand, but that's okay, because then you see this. This is now the fish. That's the fish. Yeah. Do you want to put some flowers? Ooh, put some flowers. I'm going to put this, how, it, look at how flat it is. Look. It's flat, yeah. But we almost finished. We, we pressed that one. Wait, we pressed it. Mm -hmm. Very hard. Yep. Just flat like a pancake. Pancake flour. But that's okay. And now all I have to do is just make I need some more now. For my hedgehog. Yeah, no more. You got that too. No more, mama. You want a tiny bit more sand? Mm-hmm. Okay. Still what? Just use a bit. And I think Victor's making a deer. Yeah. I'm going to use this one for another animal. I'm just going to make the deer's a mosquito. Making a mosquito. So I actually, I'm finished. You're finished? Yeah. All right. I want to do something. Yeah, we're finished. So, Look at all the animals I made. Nice. I'm going to take a picture, okay? Oh, and these are just the ant. These are all the ants. Mm -hmm. Cool, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks so. guys. Bye. All right. So here is one of my finished pieces. I really hope that you had a good time doing this workshop. I loved chatting with you in the comments section. I hope that you and your families are safe and well, and thank you so much for joining me. Bye. Right. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for watching uh, the video that we just showed about making art from nature. I hope you all enjoyed it. I've already got some questions from you to answer. So I'll, I'll dive into that. Um, so the first question I got was, uh, at what age did I start doing art? 
And I would say um, pretty much from the time I could hold a paintbrush. So I was pretty young. My dad is an artist um, and I grew up in a family of artists. So we always were doing painting and creating things from paper. My mom did a lot of crafting with us. Um, so uh, at what age did I start doing art? I would say from birth, <laughs> but uh, I think, um, you know, when I, when I was a teenager and going into university was when I really started considering myself as an artist. Um, I studied visual art at university, um, which I really loved. Uh, next question, what inspired me to do this workshop? Um, creating art from nature is something that I've been doing for a long time. I've got a painting here and it's kind of big, so I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you'll maybe see part of it. So that's that's a piece that I created um, when I was in university using pressed flowers. Um, I also do smaller pieces like this where you can see the birch bark behind and then it's got beadwork on top. So those are just some examples. So I often use natural elements or um, inspiration from nature when I'm creating my art. Uh, oh, there was some questions about <laughs> eating fiddleheads. So fiddleheads are uh, ferns before they sort of grow into the big fern. Um, but make sure that you are with someone who regularly forages for fiddleheads because not all fiddleheads are edible. Um, but sometimes you can find them at the farmer's market or um, at your grocery store even in the spring. So we're, we're sort of out of fiddlehead season now, but um, uh, someone asked if I filmed this at night. Uh, so some of the pre-recorded stuff was filmed at night. Um, some was filmed during the day and then we cut it together uh, to, um, to make the video. What is an artist? I saw that question. I think an artist um, is sort of like any occupation. You study it, you hone your craft, uh, you become proficient at something. Uh, that you consider art and you call yourself an artist. So I think um, you decide when you're an artist. <laughs> uh, there were some questions about the activity uh, that I did at the end with the boys, uh, whether I was using salt or sand. And um, I was actually using uh, sand or sugar, but I mean, you can feel free to use whatever you have available to you. You can use soil from outside, you can use sand, you can use dirt, <laughs> whatever you want. Um, how will I preserve my art? So there's a few things that you can do to preserve your art. Um, you can buy like a varnish spray and spray onto your art if you want. Um, but for example, this piece that I did with the birch bark, this is natural. I didn't varnish um, the bark at all. Uh, this piece is several years old, but what I do is I um, keep it out of direct sunlight. Um, I try not to let it get too hot or too cold. Um, so somewhere in your house um, where it's not going to be sort of exposed to the elements, it should preserve pretty naturally on its own. So that's one of the ones that I did in the workshop. Um, I have had it in my kitchen and it's... Uh, preserving pretty well so far. But yeah, the main thing is if I wanna really keep something like this where it's sort of three dimensional, I'll probably spray it with varnish. Um, uh, oh, was there rocks in the sand? Um, yes, I had uh, small little rocks in with the sand. And so you, again, you could use all rocks or you can use sand with rocks or sort of whatever you would like. Um, I'm getting some more questions coming in. Um, so do you re recommend putting a gloss over the pressed flowers? You, you certainly could. Again, um, you can get varnish spray sort of at any art store. You can probably find it on, uh, you know, online stores too. Uh, you also could use something like the Mod Podge and paint over it if you want. Um, I do find sometimes that it, the Mod Podge will sort of make it sticky and dust will stick to it. Um, so if you really do want to preserve it and the whole piece is flat, you could put it behind glass um, and that would help preserve it. Uh, or you could spray it with the, with the varnish spray. 
what was the first piece of art that you did? Good question. Um, upstairs in my house, actually, I have a painting that I did. I'm not sure exactly how old I was, but I was, you know, maybe six or seven. Um, and my mom framed it. It was sort of the first piece where I started using shading um, in my painting. So that meant that when I painted the trees, they weren't just all green, there was different variation in the color. Um, so I think that's probably um, my first piece of art. I would consider that my first piece of art. I like the aspect of telling your story with your nature art. How has your story changed over time? That's a great question. Um, I think my story has changed over time. I think especially in the last seven years um, since I became a mom because um, part of our tradition is handing down knowledge. Um, so it's given me an opportunity to think back to all the teachings that I've received from my parents and start passing those down to my children. Um, so I think as a storyteller, the, the narrative changes when you become a parent because um, you're, you're not only just talking about yourself, but you're also talking about your ancestors. So I think um, starting to preserve that history um, in my art, those teachings in my art um, is a way to honor our oral tradition um, because that once the piece is created, I can talk about it um, and we can talk about the stories. Um, my children love storytelling. They love when their papa tells them stories. Um, so I think, um, you know, as you mature as a person, your, your story will change. Um, and it's sort of a beautiful way to document that story because I can look back at pieces I've created, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you know, even longer, if you look back to my very first paintings um, and you can sort of see how that story has changed and the elements and, and uh, objects that I bring into that work. How do I feel when I, when I make art? Um, I feel amazing. I find it um, very healing and therapeutic. It's a way to express yourself um, to others uh, in a way that's very personal um, and I, in a way that I find easier sometimes than using words uh, because I can express a feeling if I'm using like really dark colors or really bright colors. Um, or maybe both because I'm feeling happy and sad or scared. Um, it's a great way to, to sort of express those feelings. Um, why do you like art? I don't know. I think, you know, appreciation of anything uh, just comes over time. I've always loved art. Um, growing up, my dad was always making art. Uh, my grandfather was a photographer. Um, I had aunts and uncles who were painters and photographers. So I, I just grew up always being surrounded by art. And I just always was drawn to it. My mom would take us to galleries to see art shows. Um, in Ottawa, we have something called Art in the Park. So we would go to the park and see um, local artists sort of showing their art. And I just loved it. I always wanted to be a part of it. Um, my dad used to... Uh, vend at powwows and at art shows and we would go together um, and I would sit under the table drawing and uh, it just, I don't know, I've just always loved it. Um, so I was going to show you a couple other things. Um, so this is a birch bark basket and Chuck Amanda uh, has been teaching me over a number of years how to make them. Um, Using natural elements to create art is really important to me because this is preserving a, a tradition um, that has been uh, in the Algonquin Nation for you know many many generations. And you'll see um, when I when I decorate them. So this is actually etched like right into the bark, but it's always a, a natural element. So this basket, when I made it, um, I was having a reoccurring dream about a tree that had birds instead of leaves. And uh, I didn't really understand what it meant, but it was such a powerful image. I wanted to sort of record that. So I don't know if you can see it, but so that's my tree with the, uh, with the birds, with the leaves made of birds and the roots made of birds. 
And then I've got a, a moon and a full moon to sort of represent the passing of time. And uh, what else? Um, all right, sorry. And I have another activity, but I'm just seeing there, um, there is another question here. Um, have I ever considered doing something else? Uh, so I, I do have another job. <laughs> so um, all of you who are students, uh, you may not know what this job is yet and that's okay. Um, but I'm also a policy analyst. So I do a lot of writing. Uh, I read a lot of reports. Um, and uh, yeah, so I do both. So um, growing up, my dad also uh, had a day job and then his, his art, which was you know really his passion. Um, I think he was passionate about both, but uh, I sort of feel the same way. Um, everything I wanna do is to sort of help our communities. And uh, I feel that I can do that through art, but I can also do that through my voice. Um, Sorry, and, and sorry, one more question. Uh, what would I say to people who don't think that they're good at art? Uh, the amazing thing about art is that you can learn to be great at it um, if you just uh, work at it. My son who's seven really wants to be um, a comic book artist. Uh, he draws every day, he practices every day, he watches videos about how to draw and he just, you know, is constantly drawing. And I was sort of the same when I was growing up, I was always drawing, I was always collecting things to make pieces of art. And you don't have to, you know, buy anything, you can use recycled products to make your art. Uh, the little sort of quick workshop I'm gonna talk about right now is, um, is something that we've been doing. We collected a lot of supplies to, to film this workshop and I wanted to make sure we used everything. I don't like anything to go to waste. So we started um, making sort of uh, element jars and you can use, you know, if you have old canning jars at home or a jam jar, uh, any kind of jar that you have. And we put um, tea lights, those little LED lights um, like this. And we put those inside and then we started putting in the other elements. So, you know, a piece of cedar. Uh, we had pine cones that we didn't use. You can put those in. Um, we also had other pieces of bark, like you could cut, you could cut shapes into your bark, or you could, you know, punch holes into the bark and put those in your jar. And it will be sort of hard to see in here because it's bright, but um, it was sort of a fun activity that we did at night. And, uh, and when you go to bed, you can take it with you and have your light on and it will sort of cast interesting shadows, um, which is sort of fun, I think. And uh, yeah, so I mean, art is can be made from everything that's around you. Um, in our communities, a lot of our art, uh, was incorporated into things that we used. So into our clothing, you know, onto baskets that we used for cooking, for storing food, everything, um, everything was art. I, uh, I'm not a proficient uh, linguist, but you know, I, we didn't really call them arts and crafts. It was just, you know, a basket and it's sort of functional art. And that's what I really like. Uh, I've got another question. If you didn't like art, what would be your hobbies? Uh, so if I'm not doing art, there's lots of other things that I enjoy. Um, I, I started playing soccer as an adult. <laughs> so I do, I, I enjoy playing soccer. Um, I enjoy being outside, going for walks. I love listening to music. I love watching movies. So I have lots of other hobbies um, outside of, of sort of making art, um, but I think art and being creative is a is a huge part of what I do, um, and especially relearning customs and traditions uh, and practices that I I didn't have uh, knowledge of before. Um, so I've been learning, you know, how to make the birch bark baskets. I've learned how to make drums. I've uh, been learning how to make moccasins. I've just started 
doing research and learning how to make moss bags, which um, our babies sleep in. So if, uh, if you know what swaddling is, where you wrap the baby up really tight, a moss bag was sort of like that. So it worked as a diaper and it also worked to sort of swaddle, swaddle the babies and make them feel safe. Do you do art with non-natural components? Um, yes, I do, um, but not very often anymore. Um, I am also a photographer, so I've done a lot of photography uh, when we travel, um, when I go anywhere. I almost always have multiple cameras with me and uh, I really enjoy photography. Uh, I know how to develop my own film and how to print my own photos. I don't do too much of that anymore, um, but I do enjoy it uh, if I have time to do it. What is my favorite style of art? That's hard. Um, I mean, I like mixed media art. I, I consider myself a mixed media artist. So, uh, you know, it's not just painting, it's not just beadwork, it's not just basket making, it's sort of incorporating all of those things together. Um, here's another piece that I did. So this is silk screened uh, on fabric with some beads, with beadwork. Uh, this is sort of one of my early pieces when I was just learning how to do beadwork. Um, I really like, to sort of bring in all these elements, um, you know, from from my background into one sort of big work of art. Do you think art is awesome? I absolutely think art is awesome. I think it's amazing. Like I said, it's a great way to express yourself. Um, you know, everybody has um, a purpose. Everybody has a voice, and it's a great way for you to express yourself and use your voice in a way that can inspire other people. Uh, do you do workshops for high school? Um, I have not done any workshops for high school. I have done workshops for elementary school. I've gone to uh, Girl Scouts. Um, I've been actually, oh, I take it back. No, I have done workshops for high school. Uh, yes, I used to do workshops for high schools um, at the uh, Museum of History. So I, I am happy to do workshops for sort of any age. Um, I think art's important and I think everybody should be making it, whether you're a child or a teenager or an adult. Do you play an instrument? <laughs> Interesting question. Uh, growing up, I did play the piano um, and I also sang. And um, I have been learning some traditional songs from some friends. So uh, I'm hoping to do more of that, more singing and more drumming also. I made myself a hand drum this year. So I'm hoping to uh, learn some more songs and learn how to drum. Do you have any tips on how to do art? Um, I think the most important thing is to try a lot of different forms of art. When I was growing up, um, my parents would put me in sculpture class and painting class and drawing class and photography class. Um, you don't have to take classes. You can just, you know, I, I mean, it's amazing now. You can go on YouTube, which you couldn't do when I was a kid, but you can go on YouTube and you can find videos on almost anything that you want to learn. Um, or ask your friends or your friend's parents um, if they have a skill that you wanna learn and, and just try it. So if you're interested in photography, you know, ask to use a camera, take lots of pictures, look at them, think about what photos you like and what you like about that photo. Is it the light? Is it the, you know, whatever you've taken the photo of. If you're interested in painting, um, you can paint on almost anything. You can paint on wood boards, you can paint on canvas, you can paint on paper. You know, you can use acrylic, water watercolor, oil. There's so many things you can do um, to experiment and sort of figure out what you're interested in. Um, you know, I've been learning traditional beadwork, flat beadwork, raised beadwork. Um, you know, there's just, it's endless. There's so many things you can do with art and I encourage you to try at, you know, everything that you want to try uh, until you find what really works for you. Uh, how many styles of art do you know or have invented? Um, that's a hard question. I'm not sure that I've 
invented any form of art, I think I've taken elements of art that already existed and sort of worked it into my style of art, which is sort of that mixed media art. Um, I mean, I think I just mentioned <laughs> several different styles of art, um, but I like strongly encourage you to, to, you know, go to your community center if they're having um, an art show or look to see if there's artists in your area that um, are making art or doing art uh, and talking to them. You know, if you have guest speakers coming into your school um, who are artists, talk to them about their art um, to find sort of what inspires you. What is your favorite piece of art? Um, my favorite piece of art, that's so hard. <laughs> I come from a family of artists. Um, I have so many pieces of art in my house that I absolutely love. Um, my dad did a sky woman painting for me. Uh, so it's the sky woman that's a, a, you know, a creation story where the sky woman falls from the, from the sky world down to this world. And as she's falling, there's sort of animals that help her. Uh, on that um, journey uh, to creating the land that we live on Turtle Island. Um, I really like that story just because it is a creation story. It's, it's depicting like our history, um, but I also have uh, beautiful pieces by my aunts and uncles up in my home that I really love. And then in terms of sort of professional artists, I love Daphne Ojig. I love Robert Davidson, Greg Hill, I mean, there's just so many. Could you try again? Sorry, that was my Siri. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I think those were uh, some of my sort of famous uh, uh, favorite professional artists. Um, so I think we're getting close to the end of our time. So if you have any other questions, you can reach out to me on social media. Uh, you can go through the uh, Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival. Um, I'm happy to answer any more questions that you have. I hope you really enjoyed this workshop and that um, you'll share with me uh, through Instagram or Twitter or Facebook uh, any of your completed pieces. I would love to see them. I hope that you and your families are safe and well. And uh, I hope you have a really wonderful summer. Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival Virtual Edition featuring interactive cooking demos, live and streaming concerts featuring some of Canada's best Indigenous talent, virtual marketplace, online arts and crafts demonstrations, social distancing powwow, and more. Summer Solstice Indigenous Festival Virtual Edition, June 1st to 21st. More at summersolstucefestivals.ca.